my name is Jason Chonko and I'm the Applications Marketing Manager at Siglent Technologies North America. In today's video I'm going to show you a little bit more about the search and navigate feature for the SDS 2000X Plus. Uh, this is also available on a few other oscilloscopes, the SDS 5000X and the X-E series. Uh, I had a customer call and they were doing dirty power testing. In dirty power testing the uh, sine wave the voltage coming in, instead of being the max voltage, you actually get dropouts or smaller, uh, smaller events that occur. A brownout is another way of putting that. Uh, so the power coming into the instrument or the device that you're testing is not consistent over time. This particular application, they wanted to capture when that voltage dropped to a certain level, but they needed to see it in a very long time base. So this particular customer wanted to collect data for seconds and take a look at single events that may have dropped out. So here in the US uh, or in North America, our power is 60 Hertz. Uh, that means the period of the sine wave for the power be or the voltage being delivered is 16.67 uh, milliseconds. So I set up a little experiment here in which I am um, using one of our function generators. Channel one is going to be putting out a, a amplitude modulated sine wave. So the high and low levels are set here, but I'm at 16.67 milliseconds. Um, on, so a bit 60 hertz on that sine wave. And then I'm modulating it using channel two. And what I'm doing with this particular event, or in this particular case, uh, channel two is staying high for a period of time. That means I'm gonna get full amplitude out of that AM modulated signal for channel one. Then I'm going to decrease the amplitude for model or channel one by dropping this voltage value on the pulse. So in this case, I've got a one second pulse and for 984 milliseconds, so the majority of that pulse is going to be high, but then 16 milliseconds is going to be low. That's equated to roughly one period. And you'll see on the scope display, I'm seeing about once a second, I'm seeing a, uh, I'm seeing a one period drop in my amplitude. Now, if I knew exactly where it was, and I do in this case, because we set up this experiment, uh, it's pretty easy to find. But if I didn't know where it was, it may be very difficult. And it's even worse if I change the time here. I'm just going to make this 10 seconds, and then I'm going to set the pulse width to 9, 9, oh, sorry, 9, 8, 4 uh, milliseconds, oh, sorry. 9.984 milliseconds. There we go. So now once every 10 seconds, I'm going to get this event to occur. Uh, maybe it could be even longer. I could do 100 seconds and just have it show up once every 100 seconds or so. And you can see here we're getting, um, we're getting some of that showing up here. And I may have made a mistake. Oh, yep, I did. actually want that to be 9.984 seconds, so 16 milliseconds, and we should get the uh, things to key back up here in a moment. So I'm gonna back out a little bit, and I'm going to shrink my time scale. So now I'm going to look at, this is five seconds per division, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got 10 divisions, so this is 50 seconds worth of data. And you'll see, I'm going to, um, disable that for just a moment. We'll let that collect data for just a moment. Okay, now we have all of our data and you can barely make out that there are some discrepancies here periodically. Now, again, we're doing an experiment so I know that those are particular problems and I could say, oh, okay, we can just zoom directly into those areas. But what I would like to do is actually do a, you know, more of a, a thought process here. We don't know where things are happening. What we can do with the oscilloscope is turn on the search feature. And with search, search is really a secondary trigger. So we've collected all of this data. We can actually stop collecting data now. We have all of this data in, in the scope. And now we can apply a secondary trigger and help to filter out or identify particular areas that we may want to go and drill into and look at a little bit more detail. So in this case, I'm gonna take a look at a runt trigger. The runt trigger, the way it's configured, or, or a runt trigger is a specific period of time or less than a specific period of time. We have different, whoops. Um, it's a specific period of time or under a specific period of time. We can set a limit range, so less than or equal to. My upper value in time is 25 milliseconds. I know I'm looking for a period of time where we're getting voltages that are lower than a particular value. And now I can adjust those 
values. Oh, and now you'll see that once I adjusted the upper levels, now we have these white arrows at the top and those are indicating that there's something happening that matches this trigger condition in those particular areas. And now, since I see those very easily, I can then go to one key navigate and I can go to each event number. So now this is event number one, I can then expand it, whoops, I can expand it and take a look at that particular event. I can also turn on measurements and with measurements we have the ability to turn on a gate. Now I can turn on a particular gated measurement and I can move that gated measurement and just look at the voltage values in that particular area. So you can see 360 millivolts. So I have a fairly significant drop in that particular measurement or in that particular amplitude for a really short period of time. So search and navigate can be extremely helpful when you're looking for that needle in the haystack. We have a lot of data to look through, but that secondary trigger search or that search capability to be able to apply that secondary trigger as a filter can really help call through that data set and give us a lot less to look through to find that specific answer. So I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, if you have any other questions, please contact your local Siglent office. Thanks, stay safe, and take care.